Good morning, everyone, and uh, we welcome you uh, to the PMC Business Systems Inc. online training called Learn Together. And um, we are deeply honored today to have Mr. Jay Habuneta. Uh, our uh, in, uh, PBSI training consultant. Um, Sir Jay Haboneta is the managing director of Nexus Innovation Labs in De La Salipa. And also, he is the co founder of the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation and chief panda of IMVR Panda and several other technology startups. He sits on the boards of various organizations in the country and consults in disruptive technologies, resource mobilization, and social innovation. And of course, our uh, good friend of PBSI, uh, Mr. Jay Haboneta. So I'll give the floor, or I'll give the screen to Sir Jay. Sir Jay? Maraming salamat. Um, thank you, Joseph. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can we have a thumbs up? Again, magandang umaga po uh, sa inyong lahat. And uh, again, thank you very much for joining us in uh, this morning session with PowerMax Center Business Systems, Inc. Um, I'm very honored to be sharing you know, some of my wisdom or knowledge with you uh, in terms of online-based uh, online teaching. Um, just to give you a brief background, uh, I've been doing... Uh, online training, especially incubating uh, and mentoring uh, startups, startup founders, and uh, other nonprofits, uh, even globally for a while. Um, so I think um, the the thing that's uh, sort of new uh, with my discussion is that it's not really just based on uh, teaching uh, in a classroom model, but also in terms of uh, you can call corporate training or you know, uh, just some personal learning, especially there are uh, a lot of uh, platforms today that you can use you know, to, to uh, learn uh, certain skill sets yourself. So uh, let me start uh, by just sharing this presentation. Okay, can everyone see the presentation? Thank you. Um, so good morning again. Uh, I entitled uh, my presentation this morning as Plan B, uh, Teaching from Home, because again, uh, we are, this is sort of a Plan B uh, in terms of the impact of COVID-19 to our school system, to our education system, or the learning system. But uh, let me just say that, you know, to thrive in this, uh, so some experts are calling it the low-touch economy, to thrive in this uh, period, in this era, uh, we have to learn together because I think a lot of us are not really, uh, you know, haven't lived through full online or remote-based learning. So I think there's a lot to learn from each other. And uh, I hope that, you know, we would learn from each other this morning, especially during the Q&A. So again, just to set basic uh, expectations, uh, there are three key things that you will learn in my session. Uh, number one is how to prepare yourself for online teaching or teaching from home. So for me, I think it's more the attitude and the uh, you know the context of why we need to do this. Um, I will cover that. And then secondly, how does online teaching differ from face to face? And lastly, um, only lastly do I give tips about how to go about teaching from home because I think the attitude first in terms of teaching and even learning online because I think a lot of uh, all of us are students now. We need to learn, uh, you know, how to use all these new platforms and technologies uh, to share with our students as well. So just a brief background about, um, you know, the work I do now, um, though I'm still very much involved in Yellow Boat, uh, I am uh, on an operational level. I do work at Dela Salipa as the managing director of Nexus Innovation Labs and our mission is to foster innovation and uh, entrepreneurship within the college and, of course, with different partners like PowerMax Center. Um, Lauren Season, the CEO uh, of uh, PowerMax Center, actually sits on our uh, advisory board for digital transformation. Um, and, you know, before joining De La Salipa, actually, uh, I, I helped uh, sort of uh, found 
the everyone can code movement with Power Max Center Business in Systems Inc. Uh, Maling is there and Joseph and the rest of the team. Uh, and it's our goal, you know, to it's our mission to help everyone, every Filipino to learn how to code. And of course, part of that is to learn how to use these new technologies. So I wanted to start when I was preparing this uh, module, I wanted to start with the origin of the word teaching. And it surprised me that, you know, uh, teaching is really about showing, presenting, or pointing out. But I wanted to go deeper. And so for me, teaching is really about fostering learning. And I like this, um, I like this uh, sort of quote from construction, uh, from, you know, one of the uh, foremost uh, teachers in, uh, in the 1960s in the U.S., uh, Jerome Bruner, when he said, to instruct someone is not a matter of getting him to commit results to mind. Rather, it is to teach him to participate in the process that makes possible the establishment of knowledge. Knowing, uh, let me just skip a bit, knowing is a process, not a product. So I think a lot of us who are struggling, uh, you know, in terms of transitioning to this new normal, um, it's very important to go back to the origins of education and teaching and to realize that knowing, learning is a process. It's not a product. And as you can see, there's a lot of debates now regarding whether grades as an assessment is effective or is it just pass-fail. Um, because again, uh, I think memorization, it used to work under a factory model setup of industry wherein, you know, there's a... Uh, there's set steps that you need to take. But now, creativity and innovation, you know, new ideas uh, have to come out of students, especially when, when trying to solve real-world problems. So it's important for us to realize that learning it is a process. So I think, especially with online learning, you know, not everyone uh, is uh, on the same level in terms of access to technology, to hardware, software, and uh, internet access at home. So it's very important that what we can impart to our students or to our learners is the ability to think how to continue learning uh, with whatever technology is available to them. And uh, I wanted to use this equation. Um, for me, teaching is really catalytic. It's, it's about the teacher is really now, especially online, because you know there's a lot of other resources out there um, especially in terms of you know learning management systems that are that have offer courses for free so a lot of students uh, learners have different options but for me especially in the education system in our education system it's important for the teacher to become a catalyst so again the, there is now a secondary role where hindi lang tayo po magtuturo but we have to also you know sort of prompt students uh, that there are other resources that they can use online. Um, just as a last note on this part on what is teaching, um, I think in uh, a few years back uh, in the UK, uh, there was a study wherein um, you know they place the the yung, yung first honor class nilagay nila sa last uh, last last class, and then yung yung last class section sa isang batch nilagay nila first class and then the teachers were experimenting na every day they were telling their students yung yung dating mga last in a way kulelat yung dating mga kulelat um inano nila uh, sinasabihan nila every day you're the honors class you are the best you have good grades and after a few weeks they noticed na the, the grades of the students were actually getting better so for me this should be the view that we take in uh, our classroom, in, in our virtual classroom today. We should think of it as how we can support and empower, um, especially, you know, we all face challenges um, under this new normal, uh, especially now during ECQ, wherein it's hard to go out. Um, I think people are doing, uh, we're dealing with other stresses in life. Um, and lastly, I want to show you this, and for me, that's why it's very important, you know, to embrace um, this online learning uh, tool uh, that's uh, now sort of being uh, thrust upon us. If you can see, uh, and, and I'm sure you've heard of this, the flip classroom model, the most ideal uh, learning platform or learning model um, in, in the world uh, is if 
the student can already teach others what they have learned. So again, in this uh, online setup, uh, you can ask your students to, you have a teaching, uh, you know, you, you have some teaching level, but you can also, uh, sorry, you can also uh, ask students to learn, uh, have additional learning online, and then to actually teach the class what they learn. And then that's when you can assess whether they were able to fully grasp and understand the topics that you're covering. Um, so one of my inspiration sources uh, here is an article. Uh, I, I can share the presentation, you know, after this, uh, this session. Um, is how to do better on uh, how to be a better online teacher by Flower Darby. Uh, this was shared to me by my friend J Jen Adriano from Vinil, uh, who started a Facebook group called Learn Distance Real Time. You can also search for that. Um, and she actually posted this question uh, as a start to her article. Most of us don't know how to teach online or how to get better at it, and we may not be motivated to learn. But you know, in the article, as you proceed to read it, she actually she she actually was able to prove that you know we we actually are ready. You know, we've been using the internet for some, some time. Most of us have digital tools, um, and so you shouldn't be afraid. You know, to embrace uh, this remote uh, remote way of teaching online. And so for me, there are five R's uh, for passive positivity in your virtual classroom and for me it's very important that you know before we come into the classroom and teach uh, online teach from home we have to have these five hours and the first is it really starts with the first hour and teachers are role models so if you can see if you have a concept in your mind wherein you know you mga estudyante natin yung mga students natin can also teach what they learn because for me, again, uh, the learning pyramid, yun yung pinaka best assessment mo. If the students uh, were able to really learn something, is if they will be able to teach it to others. And, you know, for teachers, it's important to, to show, to illustrate, as the, you know, the origin of the word teaching means, it's important to show not only, you know, how to acquire knowledge, but also how to share your understanding of the world with others. Uh, so in your virtual classroom, uh, kahit na online siya, di ba, minsan kakagising mo lang, you have to teach already. Minsan nasa uh, pambahay ka na, na mga damit or clothes. It doesn't mean na pwede ka nang mag, ano, uh, na hindi ka na uh, masyado mag-follow ng mga basic etiquette. It's important na you also become a role model pa rin for your students. Secondly is relationships. So again, ito medyo mahirap ngayon dahil uh, we have to teach online. But it's important to to still see the interaction. Yung concept ko dito sa relationships is the concept of uh, the dance floor and the balcony in leadership. So, for example, when you're teaching uh, online, medyo mahirap, no? I-visualize yung, uh, yung, yung mga kaharap mo kasi karamihan yan, yung makikita mo, parang mga faces lang nila uh, from their video cameras. But it's very important na yung balcony concept is you have to step out of the, di ba, baka naka-focus ka masyado sa, ibang, sa ilang students lang. So you have to step out to see. Uh, and that also, uh, that also uh, works for those yung mga nagpapasa agad ng online assignments. Baka yung mga bibo lang, in a way, yung pinapansin mo. So you have to look at it from a balcony perspective. Sino ba yung nagsasayaw, in a way, in the concept of, you know, the dance, uh, the dancer and the balcony. Um, sino ba yung, yung, yung bibo or yung nagpa-participate talaga sa class or sino yung hindi? And then maybe take the time to reach out to those na yun nga, parang hindi sila ganun ka-involved sa class. Seek out uh, what's, uh, what, what their struggles are, what's happening to them. Because I think it's important na, especially now, because it's very hard for us to see non-verbal uh, you know, non cues like body language. We can see sometimes... Uh, they turn off their video, so it's very hard to see their face. So it's important to see that. And then uh, next, connected to relationships is reactions. So I think it's very important for teachers to still see if they're, you know, to see, to gauge the level of understanding of the students. Nakikinig pa ba sila? Nagpa-participate pa ba sila sa online learning? And I think part of the basic challenge here is yung, uh, yung concept ng yung mga students ba actually may technology at home. So that's the other challenge. 
Uh, the last two is about reinforcement. So very important. Um, for me, I'll give that uh, tip actually later. It's important to look at asynchronous uh, learning wherein the students can have access to certain modules or sessions on their own time. Uh, because I think hindi, yun nga, hindi lahat sabay-sabay makakip up with the, with the, with the current or real-time uh, teaching model. So baka yung iba, baka meron silang ibang iniisip, baka yung iba inuutusan ng parents, di ba, because they're at home. So it's very important na you reinforce, you, you uh, suggest other curated content or resources that they can access. And then lastly, um, and for me, you know, I think this uh, five hours for positivity has been written in the 1950s and 60s. Yung uh, refresh is really about updating ourselves. Kahit ako, I struggle, you know, I have Microsoft Teams, I have Zoom, I have Google Hangouts, uh, and uh, we heard recently that Facebook is also launching uh, a video platform, and you know, uh, Apple also have FaceTime, uh, but you know, all these tools, uh, we have to learn it because now it's a requirement for, for you to learn how to use these basic tools, and especially when Tayo, we also try to learn online, we also have to have the ability to be able to use these new technologies. So I think very important, you know, yung five hours because coming into the classroom, dapat prepared tayo. Um, so let me proceed. Um, when you teach in person, you do a lot of things to help students feel welcome. You greet students, you smile, you make eye contact. So apply that principle to your online classes. Kung makita nyo ngayon, I, you know, I really dressed well because I think it's important to to impart to the students diba, that this is still, uh, you know, we're, 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 this, is, this is a serious matter. And, you know, it's important to set the tone and smile and uh, make eye contact. Because, again, it's hard enough that you can see each other face to face or, uh, you know, um, in, in, in real time. But uh, we can do something so that, you know, it makes it more friendly and homey uh, to the students that they feel that they're back in the classroom. So my tip actually here is sets. Uh, it's designing your teaching to work. And again, the first thing that you really, you know, that you really have to um, take on is the hat uh, that you are still teaching in the classroom. You know, pretend that uh, the kids are emulating you, are uh, following what you share in terms of nonverbal cues. So smile a lot. Um, and then make eye contact, so I guess in the video camera, um, and then adjust your tone of voice. Diba? When, when something is very, they need to really understand it, become serious, but also, you know, uh, do some online engagements also that, that makes it more fun and uh, appealing to the students. Um, and then lastly, I think say more. And here in say more, uh, my advice is really, you know, there are students who might not like this model of, you know, listening online. And they might, uh, actually, I prefer that model wherein you give me the modules, I read through it, and then uh, I ask you questions so that I can understand it better. So for me, very important yun na you design uh, your daily work life, uh, your teaching life, na as if you're really going into the classroom pa rin. Right now, it's a virtual classroom nga lang, yung difference. So again, sets, smile, eye contact, tone of voice, and say more. Um, and so let me get to the gist of my presentation. I hope okay pa kayo lahat. Um, uh, and for me, you know, I was asked uh, a few weeks back to share some uh, some key tips in terms of how to teach from home, especially during this time of COVID. And for me, you know, again, this is a plan B uh, for the education system. And for me, again, as I mentioned it, P is really about planning your class as well. So again, decide between asynchronous and asynchronous learning. Ano po yung synchronous? Uh, synchronous meaning ito, yung ginagawa natin, real time siya, parang uh, traditional siya na classroom lecture or discussion, uh, meaning tuloy-tuloy siya na there's, uh, there's engagement. Yung sa asynchronous learning naman is yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na we can put our courses or materials online and you know the students can uh, take it up anytime uh, kung kailan sila may free time. For me, the model that is working today is actually a hybrid model. I think the, the sort of the 
face to face virtually is still important uh, you know because we want to see our friends or our students or our colleagues um, but again i think a lot of the content can be can be uploaded online so that yung lectures mo which is actually my next uh, tip hindi ganun kahaba kasi di ba there are some students na maybe doing errands for their families taking care of their families so for me mas maganda if we're able to offer use uh, learning management systems and then uh, ito ginagawa ko to lagi and it's very important to communicate your expectations with your students and of course kasama dito yung pag send beforehand ng class schedule um for uh, for for many schools now uh, including dala sa lipa we're preparing for you know sort of a full online uh, delivery model so i think very important na before pumasok in a way you know uh, short, uh, sort of saying uh, that way na before pumasok yung estudyante, nakita niya na ano yung course outline, ano yung mga reading materials. Kasi di ba minsan, yun yung mahirap eh, na eh, pumunta sila sa classroom, whether actually kahit nung dati pa sa face-to-face, -face, na hindi pala sila ready. So uh, now it's even more important na the students and the kids are really ready, you know, before coming into your virtual classroom. So, and then yun nga, baka yung iba hindi participate kasi uh, ma ma mahina yung internet nila or no internet. Um, so it's very important to to present a schedule but also to set expectations na baka the, the schedules might change. Um, in a physical classroom, you can pick up, this is what I was saying earlier, di ba? Non-verbal cues. But now it's very hard. So that's why for me, it's very important na may, may, may meron pa rin yung sa synchronous learning, meron pa rin face-to-face pero using video calls or video conference, but you also upload your content online because, and then also, at, uh, you know, try to reach out to those na hindi masyado nagpa-participate para you see what's happening, uh, you know, what's what's bothering them or what's stopping them from uh, participating in your online class. For me, very important ito, no? Um, I'm not gonna discuss, you know, how to deal with stress or mental health uh, issues in school uh, during this session but I think it's very important to note na uh, everybody uh, ako uh, my wife is expecting um, in a few weeks uh, and you, you know that we have a lot of things on our mind so I think it's very important na as teachers we also um, we also become very empathetic to the plight of our students diba? I'm sure lahat kayo uh, especially now yung mga yung mga teachers are also parents at home they have to cook they have to prepare meals for their kids who are also learning so i think it's it's important for us to come together and and share best practices on this because everybody is dealing with you know some some na stress na sa covid we're also stressed by you know uh, the 24/7 uh, uh, um, sort of lockdown in the same area um, and so p is about planning your classes well L is about learning and practicing the technology first. I, I'm sure yung iba sa inyo, um, and even ako before, uh, I struggled using Zoom. Uh, I struggled using these technology tools. So very important na before you go into your class, before you actually ask uh, your students to use certain technology platforms, that you were able to practice it. And then, kung wala talagang time, just go with it. And then, you know, set the expectations that you're learning it together. And then, slowly build, you know, your your creative muscle in terms of using uh, these technology platforms. And again, uh, part of this learn and practice the technology first is you communicate the technology requirements beforehand para maset aside nyo kung sino yung walang uh, there are many students today na walang computer, walang laptop at home. So maybe the school system, uh, the school that you're uh, involved in or the company is able to provide the devices. So kahit kami sa Dalila Salipa, we're trying to find ways on how we can uh, provide the technology, which is really the basic infrastructure required so that online learning can take place. Um, and of course, there's Power Mac uh, that you, you know we can partner with. Uh, to get our hardware requirements. Um, if they click on the technology part, this is very important, no? And especially for those of us who are not used to uh, teaching online, uh, remember that uh, it has to be very easy for the students, especially if you're dealing with grade 
grade school students to access online resources. So ito, sinabi ni, ni Darby Flower, if they have to click out of a module and into another folder to watch a required video, that can be distracting. So very important, I think yung tips ko dito, you can upload. Uh, pwede naman kasing unlisted, you can upload some videos on YouTube uh, or you know you can embed it in the in the PowerPoint presentations or keynote presentations that you're using. But it's important to put yourself in the shoes of the student. Diba? What if mahina yung internet nila? What if wala silang internet? So it's very important na yung delivery pa rin ng resources, you take note of the challenges that the students are facing. Um, A is about uh, avoid avoiding long lectures and assign office hours. So for me, uh, it's very important no, na again, hindi lahat yan magpa-participate very well, di ba? May, may tinatawag tayong bystander effect. If yung merong tatlo dyan na talagang bibo lagi, minsan yung iba nag-tune out. So it's important na you reach out, but also assign, uh, you know, sort of formal office hours where students can seek consultation with you. So pwedeng over Zoom, pwedeng over uh, Facebook, uh, pwedeng uh, other channels, but give that set available time every week that students can go to you for a consultation. Um, and then again, yung, yung, yung key kasi dito for me is not everybody, especially now, is learning at the same pace. So it's important na uh, we put resources online. And then look for ways to break down complex tasks so the students make timely progress and receive feedback. So uh, sa Coursera, which I am trying to... Uh, uh, learn online as well now. I'm taking some courses there. Uh, yung isang magandang practice that I minutes. So two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Uh, one, one week is still one hour or two hours, but they broke it down into, uh, you know, very, very simple tasks, um, uh, activities, so that, you know, students won't get uh, bored or tired. And then usually my activity every after ilang uh, two-minute uh, videos. So I think it's important for us na yun, hindi siya the same na parang kaya natin in a physical classroom, kaya natin i-maintain uh, yung, yung level na for one hour uh, we're talking to the students. But online, you know, pwede like kayo, yung iba sa inyo ngayon, baka di ba naka-on yung video but your, uh, your mind is on other things or you're doing other things. So for me, it's very important that we break it down, yung, class, uh, yung classes natin or learning sessions. And then, of course, this is very important. Uh, the end in plan is really networking with others, to learn from other educators. Ako, I learned from a lot of online resources on, and also international uh, uh, resource persons. But locally, you have Jim Toscano, who's also uh, you know, teaching here with Power, uh, Power Max System uh, Power Max Center Business System team, and also um, you know uh, P, uh, the EdTech from De La Salipa and also from uh, Benil. Um, there are uh, a host of uh, potential resources that you can that you can maximize. Coursera, um, EDX, uh, a lot of these online platforms have uh, made uh, a lot of their courses free. Uh, until May uh, 30. So you can just search about it um, on online, on Google or uh, on the search engine that you're using. So benchmark also with other schools. Don't be afraid to reach out. So uh, at the end of this presentation, I'll show my email address. You can reach out to me. Um, you know, uh, PowerMap also has a training group uh, under Maleng, the PBSI. And so it's important to go out there and learn uh, from others. Because again, I think especially in the Philippines, wala namang expert pa talaga dito. Siguro globally meron na because they started their shift to digital uh, many, many years back. Pero kahit doon may struggle pa rin. Um, and so for me, the G's of plan B is letter B. It's important for us to balance family and work life today. So very important when you're planning your classes or your learning modules, it's important to see, kaya yun, very important yung comment ko kanina, yung tip ko na, kailangan naka-bite size yung content. Because not everybody, ako, I run errands, I, I, buy, uh, I, I drive uh, to get the groceries, medicine. So it's very important na we, we, we balance, we learn to balance and be yourself. So for me, it's it, yung online, very important na kung meron kang struggle at home, 
uh, be open to your students or to the parents that you're dealing with and kung sa corporate be open with your with your your managers your with your direct superiors about the challenges at home because it's important you know everybody is really dealing with this and it's important for us to be open about it so again plan b uh, is about planning your class as well learn and practice the technology first avoid long lectures network with others and balance family and work life so as an ending uh, i'm I'd like to answer some, you know, questions that uh, uh, was sent to me. Um, where do I set up virtual lectures? And next is how do I reach those who have no internet? So for me, actually, these questions are, you know, uh, especially number two is very hard to to answer. Uh, so I, I want to also get your thoughts, you know, uh, uh, after this. Um, but I think in setting up your virtual lectures, uh, if your school already has a, a learning management system, so practice that, master that, so that you're able to deliver it. For those who, uh, you know, who don't have a learning management system, I think it's time to look at available resources, whether free or paid. There are actually a lot, and maybe that's a topic for, for our next session with uh, Let's Learn Together with PBSI. So with that, um, thank you very much, and uh, we'll open the floor for um, questions and answers. Um, Mr. Joseph? Thank you, Sir Jay. So um, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourselves, or you, uh, you can just uh, type on the chat box. Uh, we'll earn 10, 13, siguro, ano, uh, uh, three to five questions. Are there any? Ayan, we have a question for Sergi. How did you set up your V classroom? V classroom. Uh, yung, yung V classroom, uh, can I just have a clarification uh, from Watcher5700? What do you mean by V? Hello? Is he there? Just to be clarified, I'm not I'm not sure what he means. Ah, the by virtual it. setup ah, though. Virtual setup. Ah, so basically I think yung uh yung virtual setup, yung sa Dela Salipa, we actually use uh, Canvas as a learning management system. And I think a lot of schools in the Philippines, especially the top ones, are using Canvas. So it it's it's really like a you can compare it to a uh, Coursera or uh, EDX, which actually can be accessed for free. So you can put your courses online, your curriculum. Um, and yes, uh, someone asked, Canvas is pwede siya sa grade school? Um, yes, Canvas and Blackboard is common. But for me, again, very important no yung attitude natin. That's why kumakita nyo 80% of my presentation is really about the, the preparation. Di ba? Uh, Abraham Lincoln said, um, when you're cutting a tree, uh, 80% or for if you're cutting a tree and you have six hours, the five hours you're actually sharpening the, the, the cutter or the, the axe and then only one hour to cut the tree. So I think very important that we embrace because again, um, there is no advice yet uh, when campuses will be allowed to open. Um, so I think it's important for us to first have that attitude to embrace technology, to learn actually um, yun yung medyo struggle dito, no? but in entrepreneurship, uh, it's actually a common concept na yung parang nag-jump ka off a cliff uh, and then while, you, while you're in the air, you're building your parachute or your airplane. Um, parang ganun ito, especially for a lot of Filipino teachers. Um, but for me, ha, uh, ang minimal, I, I love a minimal setup. So yung, if to answer a minimal setup doon sa virtual classroom, um, I, I use Zoom. Uh, I find, you know, they have security issues, but Zoom is, uh, in terms of the bandwidth, I find it na very, very, ano siya, parang it's very easy on the internet bandwidth. Kahit ma mahina yung internet connection mo, it works. Um, Google Hangouts is also okay. Uh, and all of them, I think with the exception of Google Hangout, yung Zoom, yung Microsoft Teams, uh, 
allows you to change like this allows you to change your background which is really good uh, especially if ma magulo yung uh, yung ano tawag diyan yung yung uh, likod niyo sa uh, so usual yung physical background mo um uh, yung Google Hangouts na pansin ko lang it's very it's also light on the bandwidth yung Teams medyo heavy yung requirement niya usually nagbe-blur yung ano yung session but for me ang ginagawa ko ngayon because I teach a social innovation class um in Dalasalipa ang ginagawa ko ngayon before I I would have a one hour lecture but napansin ko ang hirap kasi i, i ano di ba parang i maintain yung level of participation ng ng uh, teachers yung aking mga students doon um may hirap i maintain yung level of participation so ginawa ko when I saw that example from Coursera ginawa ko ngayon I send them uh weekly uh online uh, uh recorded lectures of myself na ganun, uh, two to ten minutes uh, uh, by each module and then pero meron pa rin kaming face to face um i think for especially for kids uh, a lot of them are being assisted by their parents so this is actually i'm i'm having a conversation with uh with power map with miss maleng and joseph na baka the other session will be it's very important for teachers now to take note na uh, a lot of their the parents are also learning Uh, with their students so actually i have you know uh, my staff uh, a lot of them uh, you know they have kids at home so sinasabi nila syempre yung mga bata minsan bago din yung technology sa kanila so the, the kids are actually learning together with their parents so actually yung isang advice ko sa inyo is maybe also create your 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 curriculum or your modules with that in mind na actually the the the, the parent is also there learning with their kid because kung may question yung yung bata, yung student, especially sa grade school after, yung parent yung expected na, na sumagot. Actually, my sister uh, who's in Cebu, yun yung struggle niya din, di ba? Because uh, parang ngayon, yung parent naging naging student din. Kasi yun nga, yung mga anak nila, anak um, yung may mga anak, ang, ang tatanungin nila after ng class is their parents. So I think it's very important to take note of that. I hope I was able to answer your question. I answer Jay. Meron isa pa question. How to motivate my students through online? Because I've noticed most of the students nowadays are ranting about this new setup. How are we going to encourage them to learn? Ah, very. This is this is a very good question. Uh, this is a very good question. No? Um, for me, we have to. This is where part of I I actually nagsa struggle ako uh, because I my background is not really teaching no I used to be in the corporate world um but it's very important especially for grade school level it's very important to make it fun and interactive baka minsan kung makita mo mas maganda yung mas maganda pa yung mga mobile di ba maraming educational game apps ngayon so in a way the way to motivate students is maybe to gamify Um, there's a good there's a good book about creating a multiplayer classroom uh, wherein yung ginawa ng faculty members sa US is uh, instead of quizzes ginawa niyang uh, uh, bosses yun di ba sa game may may boss ka na kailangan uh, talunin uh, big boss sa uh, yung sa mga multiplayer games so parang yung quizzes and exams are quests uh, and uh, bosses that you need to fight or uh, you need to overcome so and then point system nag create siya ng parang experience points di ba sa games maraming ganun so nag create siya ng parang ganun na curic na, na course curriculum para it makes it more engaging for students but for me the way to really uh, motivate students is again to start with that um, with that old uh, concept ng smile uh, yung concept ng basic di ba yung kung makita ninyo sa sa classroom the teacher has to be really in a way we have to motivate ourselves because kung hindi makita ng students yon diba that you're excited to teach online that you're excited about them you know learning online about using these resources i think if that doesn't flow you know from how they interact with you it will be very hard to motivate them to embrace this i think ang biggest challenge actually ng online is sa uh, college uh, a lot of them are asking uh, for the suspension of online classes But uh, ang question ko dyan, um, and I've spoken to some of them, karamihan sa kanila actually are on Facebook or in TikTok. 
So I, I think the internet access issue, uh, malamang hindi nakakarant online yun dahil wala kasi lang internet. So di ba yun nakakarant online at some basic level, they have some internet connection. Kahit na uh, in Dala Salipa, we did a study, meron nag-comment na uh, neighbor's Wi-Fi. <laughs> Di ba, wala silang wifi pero nakikiconnect sila sa neighbor nila. So, for me, uh, it's very important, yung, especially yun sa college, na to make them realize na kung, for example, mag-last itong uh, no-campus learning na model, di ba, dahil uh, we won't be allowed to congregate or for groups of people to come together, uh, bawal pa, then online is the only, virtual setups are the only way to to go about learning. And, you know, I think that's that's where the parents also come in. Um, a lot of parents are, when I posted it on my Facebook account, a lot of parents said na they're not also looking at sending their kids to physical, to the campus school for now. So everybody ex- exploring online channel, uh, online methods of learning. So I think very important yun to make clear din with the students na clear ba yan with their, with their parents. Because again, we don't know until when we won't be allowed to uh, open the schools. I think uh, the, the other question is, hi, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I'm looking for a training for security breaches authentication uh, digitally. Um, yes, I think you can go to Coursera and uh, a few other um, online uh, platforms. There are available uh, training on uh, security. And uh, for me, it's, this is very important. Actually, Zoom faced a lot of security uh, issues uh, you know, with the uh, w- uh, recently. Very good lecture. Uh, I am a surgeon. Uh, is currently full-time faculty in a medical school. Currently, we are shifting to online classes. I would like to learn the following. Uh, we are currently using the Zoom paid app. Uh, sir RJ, I'm not sure what the question is. Siguro sir, uh, for regarding the Zoom app, I think they are, uh, they're talking about the security of the Zoom app. But uh, if you're, um, right now kasi we're using the paid version also. Um, if you have the paid version, I think you have the agreement with Zoom. We can, uh, no, you can do with, uh, with their security. But um, um, after, share ko lang din, after we got the paid Zoom app, um, the Zoom uh, organ, uh, the creators of Zoom um, sends emails on conducting their own webinars on talking how, uh, talking about how to use Zoom, how to increase your security, especially uh, yeah, setting up a password with your Zoom conferences, and uh, uh, for that, for that, for that, that is for Zoom. And then uh, regarding uh, Sir Stephen Chua, do you have any experience using Panopto? Um, I have. All only search Panopto for a while, pero uh, we haven't tried it yet. So, siguro we'll look into it also if we ano uh, if we we have time. Siguro let's entertain um uh, uh, two more questions, Sir J. Uh, siguro ito, uh, I'll add thank you. Na. How do yeah, and, um, ayan, yes. set up your attendance? Yeah. <laughs> yes, and during classes. So <laughs> actually, you know, uh, to be honest with you, medyo challenge talaga yung for for those na may learning management system like sa Canvas, yung system kasi automatically is able to track. Um, but I think for those na yun parang minimal approach or walang LMS pa, um, it's it's a, it's really hard. No? Yung for example sa Zoom video ngayon, if uh, makikita mo naman lahat ng online, di ba? Pero ang hirap naman siya i-monitor. So I think there is some learning required uh, in terms of setting up attendance. But one of the ways that you can do it is actually, um, for me, send a survey a link after the session. Pero ang hirap naman, baka mahirap gawin yun on a weekly level. But that's one way uh, wherein you send a survey link and then you test actually already uh, some of the points that you've discussed so that matest mo kung talagang nakinig ba sila doon. And then that's one way of checking not only attendance but participation. But, uh, you know, kung trust system naman yung uh, model na pwede natin ipairal, um, you can set up actually a very simple Google Sheets and then, you know, you write the names and then uh, you can put dates and then you just check. Diba may attendance? Siguro uh, parang yung, parang instead na tatayo doon sa physical classroom, parang before you start your uh, module, you call everyone and then if you see them, diba, you just check the Google Sheets. I think that's the very minimal approach but that might take 
you know, five minutes of the time. So I think um, ang other would be just to allow them to to do it themselves and just you know maybe do some random checks whether someone uh, tick uh, the, check it but he was he or she wasn't really pr uh, present. Yung pull up um, some learning management systems have this. I think for uh, Facebook used to have on their messenger platform and also uh, Telegram now as a messenger app. So you can, uh, and even WhatsApp, so you can actually try to see that. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to have a lot of other technologies using a lot of technologies. And especially for grade school, baka wala pa silang access sa, sa, chat, uh, sa chat messaging uh, applications. So for me, it's really, uh, it's really a struggle as you can see. But um, I think that's why it's important for us to learn together and explore this different um, resources that are available online. What else? Siguro, Sir J, last question. Um, uh, my question kasi na, how do you integrate pre-recorded lectures during the lecture? And siguro for the last question is ito, yung last is, Hi, sir. How can I do online objective assessment in such a way that students will not be able to cheat? That's the struggle for okay. cheating. Very good but challenging questions. No? Thank you for that. Um, for Stephen, so De La Salipa is using Canvas. Uh, we've been using it for three years. But, you know, some teachers are still struggling. But hopefully, uh, because of uh, this situation, now everybody will be able to practice and master it. Um, for using pre-recorded um, uh, videos, you know, in this PowerPoint presentation or keynote, um, you can actually embed it. And then when you share the screen, when you play the video, it will... Uh, you know, it will just play. So you can you can actually use uh, use it that way. Or kasi medyo for me, yung for example, naka YouTube, ngare YouTube sa YouTube mo in upload or naka separate pa na, na format. Eh, you have to go out of your PowerPoint, Power Keynote, or whatever you know uh, platform you're using, and then you have to click di ba, while doing the session. Mas maganda sana kung seamless siya. And then for me, ito yung very, very critical advice. Actually, minsan ako sa Zoom, kahit walang audience, I create my own meeting and then, you know, I just try to uh, deliver the content and then I, 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 pu uh, I push recording and then after that, uh, it gets downloaded and then I review how I was able to deliver, uh, you know, the, the session or the content. So for me, those are some hacks that you can do. Uh, don't be afraid to... to um, start seeing yourself, uh, you know, recording yourself. Uh, I hope that, to be honest, I'm not comfortable. Uh, this guy, you know, um, videotaping myself, I feel uh, very uncomfortable because, um, again, I'm very frank and I'm also very, uh, um, I'm medyo excited ako minsan. So, minsan, feeling ko awkward <laughs> yung recording. Um, so, but it's time for us to, to embrace this new reality. And then lastly, Yung online assessment, uh, as I mentioned, yung, uh, yung those that with learning management systems, there is a form of, uh, there is already a feature for online assessment. But again, uh, the, 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 in, in, in the, the best practices that I've seen here is you, because it's easy for the students to Google search, they want to search uh, on Google for the answers. So it's very important that we cannot just apply the existing uh, the existing quiz questions, the existing exam questions that we're using, we cannot just transpose it immediately to online because again, it's very easy for students. I think yun, we have to accept that fact. It's very easy for the students to not really cheat, but you know, it, it, it's it very easy for them to to uh, to ask Google for the answer. So maybe a way of going around that is by um, by uh, forming your questions into e essays, but of course that will uh, take time for you to check. But uh, I, I think a multiple choice and a fill in the blanks can still work. But you know, minsan you just have to ask the class the trust basis din yun. Kasi kung magdadaya naman sila, di ba kung magchichit naman yung students, it's actually detrimental to them. Because how, how will they learn? But for me, again, yung online assessment is really a good question. Uh, with, uh, in our case, we actually tried to review. We're still reviewing uh, a few proctoring apps. Uh, but ako, I found it very expensive. And then, uh, for example, there's an app na 
mag 360 ka before to before you take the exam you have a 360 video i-check niya AI yata yung nagche-check kung, kung wala ka ba talagang kasama and then meron meron naman yung ilalock yung page but for me uh, kailangan pa rin na trust basis siya diba because and for me that's why it's important to make students understand that this is for their learning diba if they cheat if they get that good grade if they graduate because of it they will struggle to find jobs you cannot you know you cannot cheat in a way forever um you cannot fake it uh uh so very important i think on the for me kasi i'm a very fundamentalist approach doon sa teaching na you have to convince your students the the, the about the importance of uh, taking it seriously kasi again yung yung online cheating will always be there actually kahit may proctoring app ka na I'm sure, especially kung computer science students yan, I'm sure they might be able to figure out a way to, you know, to game the system as well. So I think very important yun. And lastly, I think that's why it's important for us to experiment and practice the technology because ang mahirap dito, baka mas alam pa ng students natin. Actually, in surveys that we've done in the last salipa, kung makikita mo yung adoption ng technology, lowest yung challenge sa grade school. But as the age group grows, medyo mas nagiging yung percentage ng self-assessment nila na natya-challenge sila sa technology, tumataas din all the way to the faculty. So I think it's important na to realize na yung kids today are digital and mobile natives. You know, they grew up with the internet and they might actually be uh, better better at technology than us. Thank you.